Hello and welcome to the yearly Yuletide Land Ahoy video. This is the fourth year I've done this and yeah, definitely it become, comes no surprise to know this is my favourite video of the year. So we're carrying on where we left off. Uh, last year we finished off with Shadows Over Innistrad so that means we'll be going through Kaladesh, which I've got at the back here, Amonkhet, the Hour of Devastation, Ixalan, Rivals of Ixalan, uh, well actually yeah, there is a little bit of Rivals of Ixalan here, because around this period we're still in, yeah, what was it, two sets per block period, so the usual thing of getting most of the basic land artwork, if not all of it, in the large set of the block. Then we'll have a look at some Dominaria stuff, M19, Guilds of Ravnica, Ravnica Allegiance and then War of the Spark and that's the plan for this episode. So then next year we'll pick up from there. Uh, if you're wondering where the rest are I'm going to be doing today I have this. Um, I've now moved on to my land in this era this one of these uh, deck builders toolkit boxes actually while i'm while i've got one of these lovely um what are they called holiday gift box on the i've taken the outer sleeve off of this uh, i don't know if anybody else used to buy these when they were this format before they sort of went through various changes and messed about with the contents you know more considerably and this this was the one as well if you remember you know you had the the stickers and you had i don't know if these still had plastic dividers or not i'm not sure i see them in this one but the thing about this one the reason why i bring it up i found that the return to ravnica box was the most robust of them all uh it, yeah over the different times they put this out uh, i think initially it was around about was it Christmas time and then did they end up putting these out twice a year I'm not sure but anyway at that point um, it was always a bit hit and miss each iteration as the quality of this cardboard and then but this one particularly robust I've got two of these actually I went out and bought a second one because I like it was so solid and they were super reasonable back then they not like I think whatever they're putting out now which is slightly on the more expensive side so anyway um, you know my version of a <laughs> rant if you can recall what when I, when I do that when I rant but yeah over let's get on what everybody's obviously here to see which was we'll look at some land artwork um, I'm not going to fully zoom in on this like I do with some of the Friday artwork videos uh, I'll just do a, a full card zoom because it, it's also quite nice to see here like if any of the stuff inside of where the mana symbol has maybe changed but also we're going to probably see some full art land work here as well because of the era we're in um, I think <laughs> I pre-sorted this about two weeks at ago and I now have completely obviously forgotten um, what the artwork looks like and uh, stuff like that which is always nice so where are we Kaladesh let's just try and manipulate this off camera it's going to be fun I've moved all the cards to the front so we've got everything here right let's get a nice stack of Kaladesh here and flip through these and see what we can see some of these I'm going to have more cards in the set to talk about because if anybody remembers a land artwork from this period they'll probably remember that you know if you bought the deck builders toolkits they were doing all sorts of stuff as well with foil land I think and like I said I've got this memory of full art land being a bit more prevalent at that times but we'll see if my 
memory served me correctly there. Because one's memory can be very deceptive sometimes. Okay. Oops. So five minutes in and we still haven't did any cards yet. You know, that's about par for the course, I think. <laughs> or we've got the same card on the the screen. Here we go. So Kaladesh. What do we have? So I've got one copy of each one of these going through the the colours of mana. I'm going to do a follow-up video I'm going to release after this on the Tuesday where we're going to be going using Scryfall for that one and I wanted to do a, a nice I suppose complimentary video you know, that complements this where we're going to be looking at some corset artwork over the over the years generally just as an overview to see how much artwork's changed in corsets Relate, you know, because obviously uh, what you see in core sets is related to previous sets. So I'm looking forward to doing that. But we're going to do that in Scryfall. Just as another land video. Very nice. Lots of um, swirliness in certain artwork you'll notice. So, again, this is a good opportunity to look out for reoccurring themes across artwork. Maybe there's certain cards, certain pieces of artwork out of the however many different variants they have, where there seems to be a commonality in something about the design. Or maybe there's a, you know, a certain thing um, that appears in all of the artwork. So keep your eyes open for for that. So I particularly like. The um, I, think I particularly like the forests in this set, actually. So, you know, in terms of a maybe a favourite colour of manner of artwork, but um, I, I can't. You know, I'm having trouble thinking if there's any particular set where I strongly dislike all of the artwork. I don't think that's the case. I always find something in there. So I also thought I'd include, although I don't have them all, the, the foils that I that I must have pulled out of um, boosters when I opened these. Shall we, shall we attempt to really see? Yeah, let's just try that. It's always difficult to know with the foiling. Sometimes it looks great on camera, sometimes it looks atrocious. Um, not the artwork, but just the, the way it yeah, you can't quite get it right in the light. It's interesting there, look, down the bottom there, can you see the foiling with that marbling effect? Did they have that on the, let's go back to the green one, is that something that we see? Yeah, there we go. Cool. Really, really does make that, if you compare it to an unfoiled one, does it tend to make the green symbol pop a little more? The you know the uh, mana symbol. I'm not sure. I suppose yeah, a little bit. I mean that's what I like about when you, when you get you know particularly good regular foiling, and just it really causes the artwork to just pop certain parts of it. It is great. You know where you've got those nice pieces of artwork where maybe they've got I don't know like you know, fireflies on it, you know, that sort of thing. Um, it's nice when that happens. Oh, full art one here, okay. Mm. Here we go. So, we're moving on to Amonkhet. 
and uh, yeah one of the reasons why I'm doing it like this so you can see the full card because yes we're gonna see a few pieces of full artwork and that way I'm not trying to zoom in and out <laughs> like every other card okay So I think we can probably guess here <laughs> what the common um, symbol, if you like, or item is in in this particular uh, these particular pieces of art. So yeah, one of each of the full artwork. And then we also had just regular cards with the regular sized hole. And I think yeah, I'd, I'd actually prefer this, prefer these. So what have we got here? We're looking at maybe what three variants in the yeah the usual artwork. Good. So yeah, another series of pieces of art. In some ways rather like often we've seen the Ravnica sets where you have, you know, cityscapes. Fairly predominantly featured. I think have we seen what Two out of maybe three here. Yeah, I think that's the case. And of course, bearing in mind as we sort of move through this period, where we're sort of you know, still in that, what well, we moved into the two sets per block era, we are going to get very close to a period, the period of one sets per block. And uh, just, there we go. So yeah, with this, we also had our work for Hour of Devastation. And again, two types of artwork. So we'll look through all of this. So here's our full artwork. Again, let's see if we've got some. Certain item in there. I think that will be the case. Period where we 
got into with slightly weird cardstock. These cards feel quite different and they've got a bit of a bend on them, which is quite unusual for regular magic cards. Normally I was only ever seeing it on foils. And interestingly, the, the previous foils we looked at, and those couple that I pulled in the, in the earlier basic lands we looked at, are perfectly flat, but um, these Hour of Devastation cards have got like a top left, oh sorry, top right to bottom left. I've got that in the right way. Yeah, top left to bottom right bend on them. I'm trying desperately not to bash the camera too much. I'm reaching here under the the stand. Anybody know who does this sort of close-up filming like this? I know it's just a it's pretty tricky. Um, at one point I was thinking about setting up with the stand on the other side and then inverting the final image. It's a possibility, but uh, I don't know, sometimes it's all the fun and games of <laughs> trying to reach around the, the, uh, the camera stand, but uh, that's a bit of character to the video. So back to just all regular basic land artwork for this set. At least that's all I appear to have. I think we're going to get to one point where there was one set which had a massive amount of variations in it. But we'll see. Okay. So here with Ixalan, we're actually back up, back up to the full four pieces of artwork per manor um, of the, you know, a previous period of magic we used to get that. completely forgotten about the artwork in this set actually. Had a really interesting style to it. Hopefully these, you know, the, the darker artworks are coming out good on here. That, that's one thing that was concerns me a little bit, particularly with you know things like swamps where there's a tendency for the artwork to be slightly bloomier and darker by its very nature. So hopefully once we get this up onto full screen we're gonna see that all those sort of little interesting little background images. mountains here.
if I'm thinking about it, this week, you know, all of the videos for the uh, the Land Ahoy week, I suppose, are going to be not necessarily about land, but, but artwork based. Um, yeah. Because we've got this one that's going out on a Monday. Tuesday is going to be my um, historical look through Corset artwork on Scryfall. And then Friday we'll get the usual theme deck that we're doing at the moment. So there'll be a nice dissension theme deck and then we'll be doing the commander deck flip through on the Saturday. And then next week for you know my days of Christmas videos which change every year. Sometimes I've done 31, sometimes I've done 12. This week, oh sorry, this um this year, 2023, I'm going to do something called the six repacks of Christmas, which I'm going to be doing from the period, you know, Christmas Day to, to New Year's Day, where I'll be opening a, a repack each day. And then on the seventh day, I will build a deck from the repacks. Okay, so this was just slightly less here. Yeah, they what they did was for the second set of what was a two set block, the the Ixalan block for was it Rivals of Ixalan, they did do some artwork variants. Yeah, so these are, not, there's not many of them, and they've, they've done this thing before as well with certain smaller sets where maybe they have printed some variants. So just one of, one of each here. I was trying to wrap my brains and think what actual product I would have pulled these from. I thought the other thing I'd do is feature these. I don't have many of them. Um, it's around the time of this era. So 2017 they printed an unset. Was it unstable maybe? And uh, there were these interesting Full arts for that. Now with these, I don't have all of them because these I think just turned up in booster packs. So yeah, got a sort of missing some of the colours and manner, but I thought I'd show you what I have here. So we doubled up on the the mountain there. So the, the only one I didn't get. Was uh, was a swamp, but I did get a second mountain. Same. Okay. So now, moving on. So we're into Dominaria now. Yeah, let's just shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. And the other thing I might well do this um, 
this week when this, these videos come out because I normally do a couple of like non Magic the Gathering videos which sometimes <laughs> end up featuring Magic the Gathering stuff anyway like the uh, My Life in Objects did recently but I think what I'm planning on doing is doing like a end of year type video for 2023 but more just speculating on what sort of stuff I'm going to be doing in 2024 were both personal projects in terms of stuff that might filter through to the channel um, but also you know what to sort of expect in the various slots you know you've got like the musing slot and then the, the deck building slot which is mainly you know using um, the, that EDH rec algorithm in uh, in architect at the moment um, so We'll talk a little bit probably about that and then uh, yeah basically you know others other some of the other weekly slots what might be featuring in the new year what I'm thinking about doing um, what I'm thinking about doing for my year of next in 2024 because um, I've got uh, you know the the Brian Eno diary ones wrapping up so I'm planning on doing something connected to a particular online service next year which I'll talk about when I get around to that end of year video These are very nice actually the the domineering ones. Again with these, you know, because I'm I was opening and they were still producing, was it Tech Builders toolkits and I don't know if we'd lost the holiday gift box by then or not actually. But um yeah, so a lot of this stuff reason why I've got it all is because that's where it's coming from. This isn't coming from me just opening booster packs, which is uh, can be quite a painful way to acquire basic lands. So yeah, another another set with um, happily four pieces of artwork per minute. Okay, Let's see what we have here. So, let's get these sorted. It's a bit of uh, unintentional ASMR there with the, the shuffly sound. You can see some foils there lurking at the back. So, yeah, again, what we were starting to see at this point was them you know putting foil copies of stuff in the supplemental product so the toolkits i think we had foils in didn't we get land foils in the gift boxes possibly okay so this is uh, where are we m19 now so corset 2019 So yeah, we're back to corsets after a break. I think we went from what corset M15, and then there was a break, and we had it return for 19, something like that. So with these, and um, seeing this as I was filtering, or filtering through, sorting through these a couple of weeks ago. This is where I sort of got inspired and thought about maybe I should do a Scryfall episode where I go through historically the core set I'll work because it, yeah, I've, I've said this probably numerous times now, but it, I just love with core sets how it's like a, an artwork lottery, 
you know, when you open that corset, you're never quite sure what you're going to get. And, uh, but you know you're going to get, like, nostalgic artwork. I mean, someone can correct me if I'm wrong here, but is anybody ever aware of a corset where they've actually commissioned new artwork? Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I, I, I've always thought no, because it, it, you know, the corset, even when we move from 100% reprints to what's 50-50, when they got to, was it M10? So 10th edition, up to 10th edition corsets, it was always, the, the cards as a whole in the set, they were always reprints. And then when we got to, so 10th edition was the last set they did that. And then M10, Magic 2010, um, that's when they moved over to like 50-50 in terms of the, the non-basic land cards in the set and everything else. 50% um, reprints, 50% new cards. Did they ever do that in a set with, um, you know, for the, for the basic lands where they, you know, some of it was, was reprints and some of it was you can newly commissioned art? I'm not sure. I forgot to look that up, actually. Just seeing these suddenly made me think of that, because when I go through some of these later core sets, I often look at it and think, yeah, I recognise some of that artwork, but other bits, not so sure about. stuff here and of course always happy when you get again four artwork variations so yeah this is one where there was some foil and one of each for this So they just picked one piece of artwork. That's coming up real nice, the bottom bit anyway on here. So as I pick it up, I'm going to try and uh, get that doing its thing. It's funny on these, I was, I think I did feel at the time, um, the way the foiling worked on the mana symbol area was, was better in some ways than the, the main art, although that one saying that, um, yeah, catches the light nice. But yeah, it seems quite different from the ones we looked at earlier. Where there was a bit more of a, I don't know, differentiation in the foiling versus the artwork for the for the artwork versus, you know, the the way the foiling accentuates the marble look. Um, just seems different on these ones to the ones we looked at earlier. I'm not sure if anybody else sees that or, or just noticed it off camera. I mean, if anybody's got these still, I don't know whether people keep as much land as I do. Um, I've actually got those land stations as well, which always makes me laugh. Not all of them, I got a couple. I actually bought one when we were messing about with uh, doing sealed at home with um, certain sets and, uh, and repacks. And I just bought a, a land station. There was a particular core set I really liked, and so I just bought a land station of it, so I could uh, just have a supply for that sort of thing. And this, this is interesting. Yeah. Oh crikey, this is where things went downhill, didn't they? Yeah. <clears throat> so. Hang on.
Guilds of Ravnica era. Right. Not not magic's best period <laughs> for basic land. And you'll see why in a moment. So how how many you probably see by the pile. How guess how many variants there were for Guilds of Ravnica? I think you know what it's gonna be. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to remember whether that was the set where I opened the, um, you know, what, what were they called? Oh dear. So my brain is full of gift boxes at the moment um, and deck builders toolkits. Oh dear. Bundles and fat packs, that was it. Started out fat packs, changed the name to bundles. Um, yeah, I, I think that was one of my most disappointing bundle openings regardless of what I got I was going through it and I think I had to double check in the uh, in the encyclopedia at the back to see you know whether there was literally just one piece of art for the uh, for the basic lands and then I think later than that and it was a little while after to add insult to injury they then removed the uh, the card encyclopedia and really that was the point at which I I lost interest in buying those and and I, it was actually I suppose a foreboding because didn't they then start messing around with them and charging more for them because they changed the content or, or something I was find, found you know the I liked the those bundles because they were pretty reasonable you, know, you got like land in there and However many boosters was it ten at in, in the end? And my first product I bought was was a fat pack was the tenth uh, edition one, which had those um, sort of two uh, deck builders toolkit sized card storage things in a slip case and a really nice. Um, like Companion Encyclopedia. I think I've come with that one had deck suggestions in it as well. Yeah, it was, that was a, that was cool when you got those. They had slightly less boosters in them. I think maybe they had six. I can't remember the six or eight. They had really nice dividers as well. These nice plastic, really heavy plastic dividers. Yeah. So that was a, a rather short trip through Guilds of Ravnica. Where are we up to? We're nearly 40 minutes now. So I think I'll probably go with my original plan and stop in a moment. At least that way I know I've got a video for next year. Because eh? at that point, once I get through next year's video, just so you know, um, I'm going to be yeah out of basic land I suppose because that's when I stopped buying and opening my magic product so Ravnica Allegiance let's see how many variants we get for this oh dear And we do get, as with the other ones, some foils, which again would have probably come in the a supplemental product of the time. I'm assuming, I'm pretty sure this is actually new artwork and they didn't just reprint <laughs> previous Ravnica artwork, but who knows, I don't think that happened. And the uh, for this one, the full artwork was just a full version of the regular artwork. But again, the, these are actually quite nice, you know, complaints aside, um, 
I quite like on these, as I said, the way the symbol pops. It has that, I don't know, it reminds me a lot of the um, the promo land foils that you used to get, you, you've seen me show in, um, that you got in theme decks. You know, those, they had a quite different foiling to them. And it, it is reminiscent a little bit of that, because with those I seem to remember the the mana symbol used to pop um, quite a bit. Let's just have a look at this, yeah. It's not too bad on the actual artwork itself, I can see it. Definitely has a slightly different look, but that, the way that um, mana box area works, I really like that. Yeah, I suppose it did redeem the, the lack of, <laughs> um, yeah, of land art variants in the set, a little bit. Also, interestingly enough, these are so not, um, yeah, I don't think you can see that, let me just see, I mean there's a little bit there, but that's pretty good. I've got some like foils from Rise of the Eldrazi era foils and oh dear me they are so crooked it's unreal they're just really badly bent it's all right. okay War of the Spark shuffle 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 okay, nothing Fancy here. Right, so final piece of basic land stuff. Okay, looks good. Well, maybe not for the city anyway, but uh, oh well, it looks good. So let's see how many variants we've got here. This is nice, quite different. So three pieces, so we're not quite back up to the, the four, but we're getting there. Again, maybe better, the cardstock feels different again. Actually better than when I commented earlier. Yeah, it was a, it was a weird period for card stock and of course because of my lack of opening current product I have no clue what the current card stocks like yeah price goes up quality goes down, unfortunately, sometimes, um, and it, it did make me chuckle the other day when I, I tracked down those um, Dollarama repacks that I mentioned, I'm going to do you know, like six repacks of Christmas series and the deck build, um, when I tracked those down, they're actually quite hard to find at Dollarama, I was quite pleased because they're still the same price um, that they were from when I first, these are the 15 card ones with, the, the, they, they actually have the rare in them and the price is unchanged, I'm pretty sure they're still, I've got the pile around here on the desk somewhere, I was going to put it on camera just to show you before the dip, so the, oh there they are, yeah these, these are the ones I'm talking about, these things, it's funny, still 150, so yeah at least you can say, there's no greedflation in uh, 
in Dollarama repacks. Now, of course, it's another matter whether you think they're any, they have any value to them in the first place. So, and, uh, I, I do enjoy them, but that didn't, that did uh, amuse me. Hopefully that's not going to lead to a run on Dollarama repacks me mentioning that. These things happen. Yeah, I think of all of the four the four dollar armors that are relatively easy to, for me to access here um, from where I live without driving a, a you know too far. Um, yeah, only one of them currently has any of those packs. Pretty thin on the ground. There we have it. So we're going to close off with. Uh, Featuring the lovely cheese board, which I know has fans on the channel. And why not? It's a lovely piece of work. So hopefully you've enjoyed that. That um, yeah, as I said, I really enjoy doing this every year. I don't know, next year we're good for doing this because I've still got some stuff left and I probably need to actually raid some of my uh, card boxes as well because I suspect there's probably a number of sets where you know I, I've got land for but I didn't open um, any stuff like gift boxes or uh, uh, bundles to have like yeah you know, a huge quantity um, so I'll probably have to dig those out as well for next year just so we've got a little bit more artwork to talk about so thanks once again for watching um, a particular thank you to you know all the friends of the channel out there that seemingly check in you know to the channel um, your comments are always much appreciated and um, Obviously this video also goes out to, to those members of the channel, as friends of the channel, that uh, particularly enjoy the, um, you know, the, the artwork, particularly the basic land artwork videos as well. I know there's quite a number of you that do. And yeah, have a, a great rest of the year. And um, I look forward to uh, more of the same with some variants in 2024 but we've still got quite a lot of content till the end of the year between when this video goes out and 2024 anyway to just play around with a few ideas and as I've said um, at some point I'm going to do a little end of year video and you know ask for any things maybe next year that you want to see me cover or recover because there's a lot of stuff I could revisit and it's nice to see people going back because I can see it in the stats I can't see specific people that are doing it but the stats stats wise um, it's nice to see people like reviewing the old stuff as well so thanks once again for watching bye for now and I will catch you in a future video